Hello and welcome to today's video. I am Crystal Ann Compton and I hope you are having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. In this video, we're actually going to be talking about spiritual awakening. I've written down five things and I actually am writing a book about this and I think I have 12 or 14 things in the book, but I'm going to share with you five things that you can start doing today to help you to awaken spiritually or to connect spiritually. And here's the thing. When we connect spiritually on the inside, that is always outpictured on the outside, hence the word out in outpictured. It becomes a physical reality in our life when it exists inside of us. So we always hear, as above, so below. Well, it is also true as within, so without. And so as we are going through the process of spiritual awakening, just know that because of that shift and really the raising of our vibration, that is going to show up in the things that we experience in our life. As we up-level inside, the life up-levels outside, which is the good news, which is why we should all be interested in our spiritual connection and in awakening. Now, before I do that, I just want to point to this little box right here. I can't get my, there it is right there. Text CAC.com. If you would like to stay connected to me in a mobilized way, for example, if you want to hear when I'm going to be releasing a live stream or a new video, or if I got some thoughts going on, I'm thinking about something, something's going on in my life. I will be able to reach out to you directly via text. You will be the first to know. We already have hundreds of people in this text community. It's getting kind of large, when it first started, I was able to kind of respond to more people. But now as we're getting larger, it, it's, it's, um, I can't always do that, but I do try from time to time and I do read your texts. So if you want to connect with me, hello, textcac.com. And I also want to tell you that I'm on the Insta with all you cool kids. That's right. I'm on Insta, except on Insta, I'm not Crystal Ann Compton. I'm Chris Ann Compton. Chris Ann Compton, because for whatever reason, I couldn't get Crystal Ann Compton at the time. And on Insta, I just kind of show a different side of myself, which by the way, is fully clothed. You're welcome. <laughs> but I just, I show pictures of my dogs or my home, or if I'm doing a project or I share memes or I'll share what's coming up with me, but I just, it's a little bit more personal. And so if you want to connect with me in that way, by all means, check me out on Instagram, Chris and Compton. I would love to connect with you there as well. We'll just keep this one up for the time being. Textcac.com. Uh, text charges apply. And this primarily is something that people in North America should avail themselves of. I know I have followers all over the world. Hi. But um, this is pretty much for us folks here in North America. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about spiritual awakening. And it's because I received a question from one of you. Let's look at that. This question was from Tammy Walker. Hi, Tammy. And she says, I would like to know if I'm on the path to spiritual awakening. Thank you. And before we talk about how to spiritually awaken, I just want to say, if you ask the question, <laughs> you are likely on the path because you want to be and you are intentional about being so. And anyway, connecting with you, Tammy, yes, I definitely feel that you are on the path to spiritual awakening. But of course, life being what it is, it can be very busy. We can get caught up in things. And I want you to know that as you spiritually awaken, your life is going to shift. We've all heard the principle as above, so below. Well, the same principle applies as within, so without. And as you make that deeper spiritual connection on the inside, that is going to be out pictured in your reality, meaning you will see the evidence of this in your life. The more you meditate, the more you pray, the more you raise your vibration in an intentional way, the more you change your home signal which is the signal of the triune human, you dig? The body, the mind, and the spirit, you come in three parts, but this, these three parts act as a whole. The more you change your primary signal and raise it, the more you will see the evidence of this in your material world, and that is what we want. And so I would ask you, are you seeing things shift around you? Are you noticing that your life is arranging itself in accordance with your new intention and your new desire to spiritually connect? This may show up as re relationships 
of falling away or coming into the life. This may show up as new opportunities, maybe at work or maybe with projects. This may show up as shifts in the physical body. And by the way, this is not always comfortable because check it out. I'm going to take this down, Tammy. I'm talking to you, but everyone else too, of course. As we shift our vibration and as we are doing this inner work with the home signal, the physical body, which houses the soul of who we are, struggle sometimes to keep up because the physical body is of a denser signature than the spiritual body. The physical body is of a denser signature than the divine energy that we are drawing down and embodying. And so the physical body is adjusting. It's always acclimating and accommodating this higher frequency and this divine energy. And sometimes in that acclimation, sometimes in that adjustment and shift, it can fall out of alignment in certain places. This is why you have people who are awakening, who are experiencing all kinds of symptoms in the physical body, from weight gain to weight loss, anxiety and depression, headaches, uh, racing heartbeat. All of these things can happen to someone who's spiritually awaken, awakening because the physical body is working to adjust upward to that new home signal, which is higher in frequency and closer to God. The good news is the physical body finds its way, but it can take some time. What I'm saying here is that spiritual awakening isn't always blissful. In fact, I've never known it to be blissful. I don't know why I'm whispering. I'm trying to ease it into your awareness. I've never known it to be blissful. In fact, spiritual awakening can often be like the tower card. Okay. Can I get a witness in the comments? The tower card, like my life is falling apart. My inner world is coming together, but my life is falling apart. Why? It's because the life seeks to arrange itself in alignment with the new home signal and it's good. And this too shall pass. Okay. Yes, you are spiritually awakening. Do you notice it in your life? Do you feel it in your life? Keep moving. The point of being on a path is to walk it, my friend. And so keep moving. Now, let's talk to everybody about spiritual awakening. Maybe you're just starting out on your spiritual path and you want to know some of the things you need to be mindful of or some of the things that you need to do in order to increase your understanding and expand your consciousness. Or maybe you're like me and you've been in spirituality and metaphysics for decades, and yet you too kind of need a, a refresher or a primer in certain areas. You too are always seeking to up-level, right? We're always evolving. We're always fine-tuning. And as you do, you want to keep things in mind that you can do or be mindful of to support your evolution. That's what we're going to talk about. I've made some notes, okay? I'm probably not going to look at them very much because you know me. Mommy just talks. She just talks. But the first thing that you can do to spark your spiritual awakening is be intentional. Be intentional. See, that sounds really simple, doesn't it? It's not. In fact, I would say most of the world lives in an unintentional way. In specific, they live in a reactive way. I'm reacting to what my boss just told me to do. I'm reacting to this new health issue that I've got. I'm reacting to my kids who are screaming through the house. I'm reacting to my husband who doesn't listen to me. React, react. And it's just a cycle of reaction with nothing intentional therein. Intention is waking up in the morning Having your feet hit the floor and saying something like, God, let me be a salve to someone today. God, let me be a blessing in your name today. Or as A Course in Miracles teaches us, I have come into this room to bless this room. There is no other reason for me to be here. I have come into this job to bless this job. There's no other reason for me to be here. I have come into this relationship to bless this relationship. There's no other reason for me to be here because if I'm not blessing it, I'm either neutral, no impact, or I'm damaging it. We want to be intentional. To be intentional, we must be present, don't we? We have to know we're in the now, and there's only this moment, really. We often think about the things that happened in the past, all the things that keep us locked up in patterns. And many of us dream about the future and what may come. 
But these don't exist in the 3D reality of now. There is just this moment and being grateful for this and being observant of this. This is an intentional way to be and it takes practice because the ego seeks to click out of the intention and just and just react in the world and protect the self right and the security of the self and the ego seeks to chatter and distract you with all these thoughts that have no bearing on why it is that you came here the ego serves a purpose in this life absolutely but you are higher than the ego. See, I need to I need to break down a lesson of all the minds, you guys, because you have a higher mind, but you have multiple minds and they're omnidimensional and you can occupy them. And from the vantage point of a different mind, you can see the life in such a different way. Remind me somebody, Stephanie, are you watching? Remind me to do this video about the minds because this is channeled information. And for me, it has been so helpful. The intentional person is observant. The intentional pers person is thinking and feeling their way through their day and their life. This is the first place to start. Get out of reaction. You're not a victim of this life. You're not a victim of other people. You are here to create. You are all gods. Magician, creator. Be intentional. What do you want to create today? That's the first principle of spiritual awakening and truly actualization in your own life. Second is mind training. The second principle of spiritual awakening is mind training. Now, I just talked about this a little bit about the chatter of the ego mind. And let's shine a light now on the inner narratives. The inner narratives are what move us. They propel us forward. They cause us to feel in certain ways. And of course, when we're feeling, now we're creating because feeling is the secret. Didn't Neville Goddard teach us that? But the feeling is attached to a thinking. It's attached to an idea, a concept. And too often, it's attached to a reaction that you are having about something. Oh, I'm pissed off at this person. How dare they do this to me? And now I'm feeling it, right? And now I'm creating more of it. That's how that works. The inner narratives are doing so much. What a wild and chaotic landscape it can be. And so the first prescription I have for you is start paying attention to what you're saying inside of yourself, what the ego monkey mind is chattering about, what your belief systems and your patterns are articulating, because can you dig it? Your patterns that you house inside of you, these are your limiting beliefs. These are the pains and the unforgiveness. These are the people who have hurt you that you still carry around with you. These talk. These have a language and a voice, and they show up in your head. And you'll never know what they're saying to you. By the way, they're lying to you. Your limiting beliefs are lying to you. Your abusers who still live inside of you, they lie to you. You never know, though, what these things are saying unless you listen, be still, and know that I am God. How can we know God if we cannot listen and be still? And so the first prescription, pay attention to the thoughts. What are you saying to yourself? Your thoughts, by the way, listen, your thoughts are received by your physical instrument, the body. The body's listening even if you're not. The body is hearing when you say, oh, I'm so fat. Oh, God, nobody loves me. Oh, God, I'm never going to get this job. Oh, God, I always fail. Oh, God, why doesn't anybody like me? Oh, God, why don't I look like X, Y, or Z? These might just be ambient little floaty thoughts that you have that sweep into the consciousness and then sweep out, but the body listens and not in a passive way. The body takes these thoughts as a directive. Meaning, oh, you're fat. Okay, let me be more fat. I'm in alignment with that. Oh, you're unworthy. Okay, let me manifest conditions that align with unworthiness. I'm hearing that. See, this is what the universe does too. When we have an intention and we are manifesting intentionally, we send that signal to the universe. And the universe is what manifests it for us. The body is the same way. It's our physical universe. It's always listening to the thoughts and also the feelings and manifesting. And the body doesn't ask why. 
Why, Crystal, are you calling yourself these names again? Why, Crystal, are you so self-loathing? No. The body just says, yes. Are you listening? The body just says, yes. What are you saying to your body? What are you thinking inside of the house of who it is that you are? Start paying attention to that. And when you catch yourself saying something, saying something negative about yourself, your world, or other people, stop it mid-sentence and change it. Turn it around. Take a beat and a breath. I caught that. And then supplant it with the opposite. The only way to undo a lie is to tell the truth. And so if what your mind is telling you is that you're unworthy and you notice you're thinking this thought, take a moment, take a breath, and see if you can't identify in that moment why you're thinking that thought, having grace and love and compassion for yourself. And then identify the truth. The truth is you're not unworthy. You were created in perfection by a God of miracles. You were created in the image of this being. You are worthy. That's the truth. And so you remove the negative thought and you supplant it with the truth, the positive thought, and then you continue. Now you'll notice when you're first working with mind training that this can go on and on and on, especially if you have a super contaminated mind like I did. Are you kidding me? I came from such trauma and such abuse and oh, the things I heard with my physical ears as a child coming out of the mouth of my parents, those echoed in me, tainting my world and tainting me. But over time, using this mind training, being observant and loving myself through the process, I was able to change the way that I think. And I will say this work, this mind training, is never done because as soon as you hit the level, the next level in your inner narratives, there's a whole nother level available to you. What did Peace Pilgrim say? The more I rose to the level of my light, the more light became available to me. And I paraphrase. If you don't know who Peace Pilgrim is, get with it, man. You got to check her out. May she rest in peace. The more that I rose to the level of my own light, the more light was available to me. And so the more you clean up the thoughts, the more cleaning you'll have to do. It's a fine-tunement process. That's life. Moving on. The third thing that you should do in order to be spiritually connected and to awaken is to meditate and to pray. Every time I, med I mention meditation, people are like, oh, God. <laughs> I don't want to meditate. I try to meditate, but my mind won't stop talking. That's the monkey mind I'm talking about. Got to get that under control. Even though meditation can be hard, and even though meditation can feel tedious, do it anyway. Meditation changes the fundamental signal and signature of who it is that you are, and so does prayer. Meditation is spending time with God. Prayer is talking to God. Meditation is spending time with God. Prayer is talking to God. And these enrich and raise the vibration. And so to spiritually awaken, absolutely meditate and pray. Next, fellowship. Fellowship is so key to spiritual awakening. Are you kidding me? Meeting other people who get it who also feel like weirdos in this world or, or outsiders or star seeds or people who are hungry for knowledge and truth. Find these people. This can be in real life, but it can also be um, online. Most of my friends and my best friend, other than my husband and daughter, my best friend is online. These are real people and you can enter into real relationships, but you got to look for them. You also have to be willing to let some of those people go that aren't serving you. I think I heard from Tony Robbins. He said, the five people that you spend your time with are the five people that are changing you the most. How? How are they changing you? They are changing you so that you become like them. So let's paraphrase this to say the five people who are getting the most of your time are the five people you are becoming. Okay? 
word. <laughs> These are the five people you're becoming. And so if you're spending the most time with your husband and he puts you down and he dismisses you or ignores you or doesn't value you or downright abuses you, you are becoming aligned to the energy of this. If the one of the people that you spend the most time with is your friend and she's always backbiting and comparing herself and draining you, well, then you are becoming like this as well. You have got to be so intentional about your garden, the garden of your life. And what's in your garden? What are you growing? Are you growing healthy relationships? Are you growing wellness? Are you growing prosperity? These are the things you want to cultivate and water and nourish and fertilize and harvest. Too many of us have gardens that are filled with weeds, and these weeds are people. Not to be judgmental, we're just being discerning. These weeds are people. These weeds are wastes of time. These weeds are wastes of uh, attention, white noise, social media, and news and things of that nature. Too many weeds in our garden. And so it's very important that you become mindful about who you're spending your time with and that you find your people. That's why I created the Lightworkers Lab. Do I have a banner for that? Please hold. I do. Oh my gosh, how forward thinking of me. This is my group. And I'll tell you, I created this group because I didn't have a group, because I felt in my own life isolated. And I was teaching people and I had um, programs and I really loved my students. And so I just said, you know what, let me create a space where we can all be together and continue to talk and continue to love. And that's the Lightworkers Lab. And now we're 10,000 people strong and still growing. You've got to seek out people who are at your level or higher. And the ones that are higher than your level, again, they cause your energy to rise because that's the nature of energy. If they are holding a higher vibration and you expose yourself to them, not like that. Okay, not like that. <laughs> you expose your energy to their energy, it'll change you. So fellowship is another important way to spiritually connect. And last but not least, of course, we have to talk about study, feeding the mind. Let me look up the scripture that I love. I just want to quote it correctly. Finally, brothers and sisters, of course, sisters is not in the Bible, but like it's time to put the sisters in the Bible. Can I get an amen? Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things. To break it down into modernity, we would say, fill your brain with good food. Your brain is hungry. It's like a sponge. It's absorbing whether you want it to or not. It's absorbing the shows that you're watching, the social media that you are interacting with. It's absorbing the energy in a room. It's processing it. It's sending signals to the mind, body, and spirit. The brain is a sponge. Be intentional about what you feed it. Study. Read books. Open your mind. When I first left organized Christianity many moons ago, okay, because I'm older, I was scared. I was scared to read a book that I knew my former church would have called demonic or devilish or um, antichrist. I was so afraid that I was one of the um, great apostate, uh, one of the people in the ap great apostasy. That's what it was called. Oh God. The people who fell away and backslid. And I, I was trying to reconcile what I knew from the church with where my heart was trying to take me, which coincidentally was back to who it was that I had always been as a child. So naturally, I was afraid to read. The first book I read when I started to truly awaken was a book on Edgar Casey, And then I started to read the readings of Edgar Casey on a variety of topics. And look, I related to Casey because he too was a fundamental Christian. He too came out of the same kind of background and he was a literalist. Remember Casey put the Bible under his pillow as a child or a teenager and he woke up with everything memorized. That dude was awesome. <laughs> and I love Casey. But he also got to a point in his own work and ministry where he was challenged to think outside of the box. 
because he was Christian in this way, when the reading started coming through about reincarnation, he was like, what? That doesn't fit in my box. When the reading started coming through about Atlantis and his lives in Atlantis, he was like, whoa, that doesn't fit in my box either. And it stretched him and it challenged him, but he pressed forward because he trusted his heart. So I read all kinds of books about Casey. And when it was demonstrated to me to, that it was good to study and it was good to enrich myself in this way. And in fact, through study, my life began to arrange itself differently for me. I continued to study. And now if I were to pan this camera over to that wall and over there to that wall, you would see all the books. I love books. I'm not really an electronic person or an audible person, but I love to feel the books. I love to smell the books. But study is so important. And you can do that on your own. You don't have to take a program like the Intuitive Intensive to Spiritually Awaken. Absolutely not. The, spiritual, the Intuitive Intensive is a program that provides robust spiritual teaching on all subjects. It's collated. It's put in one place so it's cogent and consumable. But you don't need to do that. You can go out and find your own way. Read the books. Study. Attend meetups and do your part to enrich yourself. Think on these things that are lovely, whatever is excellent, whatever is praiseworthy, feed your brain, feed your brain those things. Now, to recap, we talked about five things that you can do right now to begin to deepen your spiritual connection and indeed to awaken spiritually. First, be intentional. Be present in this moment. Get out of reaction. You came here to be a creator. Snap out of it. What are you creating right now? Be intentional. I came into this life to bless this life. There is no other reason for me to be here. Number two, mind training, watching that inner narrative, seeing what you're saying to yourself and knowing that your body is using that as a directive. Clean it up. Be intentional in your thinking. Also, Meditation and prayer, these are the cornerstones of the spiritual life. Even if it's hard, even if it's channel challenging, do it more. Next, fellowship. Find your people. Find the weirdos who are just like you. They're so beautiful, just like you. You become the five people that you spend your time with. Choose wisely. Last but not least, think on these things that are lovely. Study, read books. God says in the Bible, come, let us reason together. Reason. Use your reason. Use your noggin. Use your brain. It's okay. You have permission to do so. And on that note, it was so wonderful to meet with you here today. I know this is a longer video, but these are the things we've got to talk about. Please share this video with anybody that you know who is struggling with their spirituality or who has questions about their spirituality. We talked about some really simple and fundamental things that everybody can do right now to feel better about their spiritual life. And people need to know. And I'll see you in the next video. But until then, never forget that I have got nothing but ET phone home heart light for you. Bye guys.